Yo, what's up, Seeds? Welcome to Games Unhinged. I'm Anthony, and I'm here with Michael, and today we give a Tug Review. Tug is a procedurally generated sandbox role-playing fantasy game created by Nerd Kingdom. The word sandbox means that the world you spawn in is not generated until you arrive in that location. Which means everything in the game spawns randomly. Tug is unfortunately a single-player open-world RPG at the alpha stage it is in. Looking at the menu, you can see there is a multiplayer option that is not accessible at this time. In the future, this option will be enabled for users to use. Although there is not an exact ETA, you can still probably guess sometime when beta releases. Though the multiplayer does not work at this time, you can see that the new game option is completely functional. Along with the new game, there is a load game button that is accessible when clicked. This is where all of your previous games are saved. This is the option button and can be selected without any hiccups or problems. Everything in the option button is working without any bugs or as far as we know. The exit button is also working without any bugs and can be used at any time during your gameplay. To start a map, you simply name your world and click create. If you would like to use a seed, you can do so here. When loading into the game, the world will generate randomly, so you will not spawn in the same place every new world. There are six types of biomes in the game currently. There is a number of biomes that are planned for the future. The current biomes consist of forest, snow, grasslands, deserts, caves, and mountains. Looking at the ground, you can see the grass and plants moving in the wind, along with the leaves falling from the trees. Another interesting aspect of the game are the sounds and noises. The game does not have an orchestra playing in the background of your gameplay. The music consists only of sounds in the game. What Tug has done is created the soundtrack of sounds and noises that, when combined, have a similar rhythm and beat. This means any noise heard in the game can be found in the game. Down below is where all of your inventory is kept, such as the game's rocks, trees, tools, and blocks. Whenever a block is placed, it tends to blend in with its surroundings. This gives to the game and takes away from the block feeling you get from Minecraft. In the future, not all the textures will blend, only when it makes sense. The day and night cycles last about 10 minutes each. Take note, this is a kind of a guess. The moon sheds light all around us, and as do these special looking mushrooms, scattered all around the forest floors. The blocks will stay somewhat sharp and cubed for now, while the game is currently improving. Although they will not stay like this forever, they plan to make the game look more organic. There are currently 47 blocks in the first build. The game is going to be getting an update on texture soon, and the clouds will get more full and thick instead of these small wimpy ones. The trees are very beautiful in-game. There is a total of 9 types of trees and nine types of bushes and flowers. Trees are also breakable, but do not give anything at this time. Going back to caves, you can see that they are very large. There are ores embedded into the walls, but cannot be mined out at this time. There's a total of six ores in game, and there are three crystals like these. When a torch is placed, the light blankets the floor or walls very nicely. That being said, the smoke that the torch gives off is somewhat of a nuisance. You can hardly see in front of yourself when standing near one, but that's the downside of playing an alpha game. Geysers do not have a purpose to the game besides the effect it gives off. But come on! This is amazing! Altars also don't have a purpose, but we can guess it's where we will be doing all of our human sacrifices. <laughs> A workbench is a place where we will be doing most of our crafting. Since crafting isn't implemented into the game, and it's just for looks, along with the stone anvil. Tools are also just for looks, and cannot be used quite yet. Death is not an issue in Build 1, and won't be for a while. Tug is more of a creative game mode at this point of the game, so you will never run out of supplies. Let's move on to control. By tapping spacebar, you jump. When double tapping, you fly. When tapping it again, you will fall. To move forward, you press W. To move backwards, you press S. To move to the left, you press A. To move to the right, you press D. To run, you hold down Shift. To change the size of your blocks, you hold down Shift and scroll with your mouse. To place an item, you take it in your hands and left click anywhere. To break an object, you simply left click it. Side note, your character does not show any signs of hands at the time, but will be fixed soon. Okay, it's time to give it a GU rating. Michael, 
What do you like about the game so far, and what's your score out of 10? Well, I really love the graphics and how everything flows together. I guess I would give it an 8 out of 10 because how good it is in the alpha stage. What do you think, Anthony? What I love most is the animations and bright, vibrant colors it gives off. I would give it a 9 out of 10 because I didn't expect much from an alpha, but Nerd Kingdom really delivered. By the way, we just want to say thanks to the people over at Planet Tug for creating such an awesome website for Tug fans. And a special thanks to Nerd Kingdom for supporting us and creating an amazing game. Okay guys, thanks for watching our review on Tug, and don't forget to subscribe to Games Unhinged to become part of the GU community. Like and share this video or simply leave a comment for us to read. Make sure you follow us on Twitch and Twitter at Games Unhinged. Like us on Facebook and check out our Reddit page. We are super excited to start our Tug series and hope you all come back next time. Peace.